Hello, thank you for being with us for Talking Europe on France 24. I'm Catherine Nicholson. On today's programme, I'll be speaking to the Deputy Secretary General of NATO, the Transatlantic Military Alliance. This as warnings continue that there could be renewed war on European soil at any time as tensions continue between Russia and Ukraine, plus Ukraine's Western supporters in NATO and the European Union. President Macron of France due to visit the Russian and Ukrainian leaders in the coming days. Uh, we are speaking to Mircea Gioana of NATO. Thank you very much for being with us. My pleasure. So first question, really, the White House this week uh, changed its wording regarding the threat level to Ukraine from the Russian military, but it's still an alarming phrase. Uh, they say that the US assessment is now that uh, Russia could invade at any time. Do you agree with this assessment? We have um, intelligence from uh, our allies, the US you mentioned, but also many others that are going in the same direction. We are seeing uh, a further mobilization of Russian military presence uh, in and around Ukraine, in Belarus, um, in, uh, in a suspicious and uh, very unusual uh, way. Of course, you do not know uh, the real intentions of President Putin mm -hmm. and uh, what he will decide or not. But we are seeing with, with a growing concern uh, further mobilization of Russian presence in and around Ukraine. And if there is an incursion, what will NATO do? Listen, we said very, very clearly that uh, uh, we are taking uh, prudent uh, measures of vigilance uh, when it comes to NATO allies. Ukraine is not a NATO, NATO ally, it's a very close partner to NATO, but it's not a NATO ally. So uh, Article 5 applies only to the mm -hmm. uh, allied member states. Mm -hmm. This doesn't mean that we're not supporting uh, Ukraine politically in practical ways. All allies have decided to, to help Ukraine on cyber, uh -huh. on uh, hybrid, on fighting disinformation. Um, uh, also, individual allies are bilaterally helping Ukraine's uh, capacity to defend itself mm. um, in, in multiple ways. Um, uh, and of course, uh, steep, uh, massive uh, financial and economic uh, uh, penalties if Russia uh, invades again Ukraine, mm. uh, are contemplated, as we know, by the EU, by the mm. US, uh, uh, by G7 countries. In so that's a, basically a very united front from all of us. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have a toolbox which goes from the uh, vigilance, uh, posture management in NATO. You see increased uh, uh, NATO allied activity and support. In my home country of Romania, we see U.S. Uh, deploying additional troops, temporary. France uh, offering to lead uh, uh, an eventual uh, new battle group in, in, in Romania. Uh, we see the Danes uh, and the Brits uh, helping allies. We see the Spaniards uh, and uh, the Italians helping others. We see for the first time uh, after the Cold War, um, uh, U.S. Uh, uh, as uh, Harry S. Truman mm -hmm. uh, uh, coming under NATO command for the first time in 30 years. Yeah. So what, I'm, what they are doing on our side is uh, def deterrence and defense, yeah. but also engaging Russia in dialogue. Mm -hmm. And we still expect the, the answer from, uh, from the Kremlin on the written proposals that we sent to them a few I days ago. I do want to talk about the, the dialogue side, but just first, do you rule out the possibility of deploying any... NATO combat troops inside Ukraine. Uh, we know how enormous the Russian force is compared to the Ukrainian force. No, NATO will not get in, involved militarily uh, in Ukraine. Mm. Uh, we support Ukraine in many other ways. Individual allies do support Ukraine. And in, in, in order to deter Russia from doing that, what we have to do, and that's something we do, I would say, in an impeccable way, impeccable way, both in NATO, both in the EU, between um, uh, G7 countries, is to really demonstrate uh, to, to Russia and to the leadership in, in the Kremlin that in a cost-benefit analysis, an additional military intervention against Ukraine is a net loss for Russia. Mm -hmm. Let me give you an example. Now they, they try to tell us uh, not to strengthen uh, the eastern flank. NATO didn't have any military presence in the eastern flank before 2014, after the illegal annexation of Crimea. They want to have Ukraine uh, in their sphere of influence. Was the result of the continuous war in the Donbas and the annexation of Crimea and the threat today against Ukraine? 10 years ago, only 20% of Ukrainian people wanted to join NATO and the EU. Today mm -hmm. we have 60 something percent. Mm 
So in a way, we hope that Russia will realize that what they do, they, they get the opposite of their intentions. Well, President so, Putin uh, obviously a stronger casts NATO, it A stronger the NATO, the a United way. West, mm. and a, a Ukraine that wants to, 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 to go towards Europe, um, uh, which is the opposite of the intentions of Russia. Of course, there is the possibility that Russian retaliation wouldn't necessarily be military. Is NATO prepared, for example, for the possibility that Russia could cut off Europe's gas supplies, prepared in a practical way, I mean? Energy security is not something that NATO does directly, but we are looking into energy security implications. Um, and we know that uh, Russia uh, has weaponized uh, the exports of, 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 of natural gas towards Europe in many occasions, so that's, that's a risk. We are also looking very carefully, and it's something that we do, uh, on cyber threats. Mm. And these cyber threats are not only against Ukraine, we've seen them recently, we anticipate uh, especially if sanctions will come in, mm -mm. some form of cyber retaliation from Russia also mm. against our interests. We are seeing a massive disinformation campaign led by Russia and, and their proxies uh, in our public opinions. They're trying to divide us. So we are looking to the hard military uh, issues, but mm. also to hybrid cyber uh, resilience, uh, disinformation. And this is mm -hmm. something that we do in NATO uh, in a very, very united and and uh, and uh, uh, anticipatory way. The European Commission, the UK, the US say they are ready to impose new and heavier sanctions on Russia and Russian individuals if there is an incursion, they say. Uh, but Ukraine's President Zelensky wants the sanctions preemptively. Would NATO support that? Listen, I just co-presided uh, the other day a joint meeting between the North Atlantic Council, NATO, and the European Union uh, Committee, uh, uh, Policy and Security Committee of the EU. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we had basically 30 allies and 27 member states around the same table discussing Ukraine and Russia. And I have to say that, uh, and I also met Ukrainians, uh, NATO, EU and Ukraine. I've done this in multiple occasions. So, of course, uh, uh, the European Union decides what kind of sections and what will be the triggers for those sanctions. Um, uh, and of course, Ukrainians are asking for some form of uh, preemptive sanctions uh, when it, this is not up to me to judge. Mm -hmm. But I know one thing, that if Russia will invade Ukraine again, there will be stiff, steep and, uh, and far-reaching sanctions from the EU and also from other countries of the G7 that you mentioned, US, Canada, UK mm -hmm. and other players that are not members of the European mm -hmm. Union. A little earlier, we touched on the issue of uh, one of Vladimir Putin's demands being a promise that Ukraine would never be allowed to join NATO. Uh, how much support is there currently within NATO now for Ukraine to be allowed to join? Listen, uh, nobody says that Ukraine will join NATO anytime soon. Uh, Ukraine has lots of things to reform uh, domestically. And also have NATO to have consensus. Today we don't have consensus for eventual membership of Ukraine into NATO. But having said that, nobody has the right, a third party, a mm. veto right on a decision that is a sovereign decision of the country in case Ukraine and an organization they want to join, which is us, NATO. Mm -hmm. So it's up to us to decide if Ukraine uh, is ready to join by consensus in NATO and if uh, Ukraine qualifies to join NATO. Yeah. Because if we accept that kind of, of return to the spheres of influence in Europe, we basically start saying that uh, a third party, namely mm -hmm. Russia, has a veto right to uh, today Ukraine, uh, tomorrow Moldova or Georgia, uh, or returning to the spheres of influence uh, of the Cold War in Europe. This is unacceptable to us. There's nothing uh, that uh, uh, can be decided uh, uh, on top of a sovereign nation is that nation that has to decide its own destiny. And this is a principle will not, will not break. And in a written form, we say this to the Russians. Mm -hmm. When we sent written proposals to them, we said, listen, the things that you are mentioning, spheres of influence back in Europe, it's a no-go. We have lots of other things we can discuss, we should discuss, transparency, uh, lines of communication, reopening the Russian embassy uh, to NATO here in Brussels, which they closed. Uh, allow us to reopen our civilian military presence in Moscow, which mm -hmm. they closed. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are lots of stuff to discuss with Russia constructively mm -hmm. if they want to engage. Mm 
Uh, just one very important area to speak about. Uh, the head of NATO, your colleague Jens Stoltenberg, sounded the alarm over what he called a significant movement of Russian military forces into Belarus. Um, he said the West must prepare for the worst. What does that mean? Can you be more specific for us? Listen, uh, this part of the year uh, is a seasonal uh, period of the year for R Russian military exercises. Mm -hmm. And this is something which is what we call the normal seasonal cycle. NATO does the same thing. We know they are uh, transparent, they are announced in advance. What's highly unusual and suspect is the mobilization of additional forces on top of the exercise that they are organizing with Belarus. They have brought, as Secretary General Stoltenberg mentioned uh, the other day, uh, unusual uh, high-end, sophisticated special forces, uh, strategic bombers, that's highly unusual. But is this in so, the current context, Mus uh, Moscow flexing its muscles or act actively it, it, planning something obvious, is the question? It's obvious an additional uh, show of strength and intimidation uh, mm. when it comes to, to Ukraine. And but testing do you suspect also action from Moscow with these troops? We don't know. Again, I don't know the real intentions mm. uh, of Mr. Putin's. Mm -hmm. um, I understand that he's making up his mind on the response to what we have sent as NATO, the US, parallelly uh, to them. We hope that they will not choose uh, that path, which mm -hmm. is dangerous uh, and also against their own interests. Uh, and for the time being, we are very, very uh, vigilant. Uh, we are taking active measures and prudent measures to protect allies. And we try to support Ukraine uh, as uh, NATO, the EU, or individual member states or allies. Mircea Joanna, thank you so much for speaking to us on Talking Europe. Thanks to you for being with us. Uh, do stay tuned. Part two coming up in a couple of minutes' time here on France 24.